Hello one and all, Jessica Bockler here from the Aleph Trust and today I'm in conversation with Dr. Leela Moore who is a lecturer, a filmmaker, a mixed reality artist and she has a wonderfully diverse background also in fine arts, in dance, in life and screen performance. A real pleasure. Good to have you here Leela. Hello Jessica. Welcome. So you specialize in the field of technoetic arts and you're going to unpack what that means later on but essentially you're exploring how and where indigenous and shamanic rites and rituals intersect with and kind of find expression in our contemporary culture and you're also passionate about exploring how virtual reality and cyberspaces can put us in touch with deeper states of being kind of altered states of consciousness, if you will, expansive, imaginal states that bring um, meaning making and growth and that can also facilitate collective transformation, which is very exciting. Um, Leela, could you tell me what are the seeds of, of this lifelong fascination with this area? Yes, I have a lifelong fascination with visual art, performance, film, dance and ritual, which I began to explore seriously when I became a multimedia performance artist at the age of 20. As a child, I wrote poetry and science fiction stories and studied classical ballet at the Royal Ballet School. My teachers predicted though that I wasn't destined to become a dancer but a choreographer Indeed, my PhD entitled Dance on Screen was about choreography for the camera and the screen as a new hybrid art form. I completed my PhD at Middlesex University in 2001. It involved making a dance ritual film named Gaia Mysterious Rhythms about a young woman's transformative journey as she interacts with the environment of the seashore. The elements of nature, the sun, the moon, the sea and the earth become mirrors of her inner states, reflecting mythic archetypes and motifs inspired by the mythologies of ancient Greece, ancient Egypt and the mystical Kabbalah. Making Gaia Mysterious Rhythms was a turning point in my work as an artist and scholar. I, at the time, I underwent an alternative health treatment and healing process that entailed a striking visual phenomenon. I therefore aspired to include visionary visuals in my work, hoping to share such images with as many people as possible images that may have transformational impact on the viewers. In the thesis, I refer to holistic dance and to expressive therapies, especially to the notion of the metaphoric body or the body as a source of transformative images. In the thesis, I also demonstrate that this art form that evolved from live performance to performance on film, on vid on film and video on screen and from sc screen to cyberspace and to performance in virtual reality has the capacity to take us into the heart of rituals and mythical journeys that depict inner worlds and altered states of consciousness unlike other art forms. Prior to my PhD, I studied fine art and art history and during my MA in film at St. St. Martin's College of Art and Design, I discovered the films of the legendary filmmaker Maya Deren. Maya Deren's films and theoretical writings including a masterpiece publication on voodoo in stimulated my involvement in film as a medium for mythical storytelling and as a ritualistic and magical art form. It's a very rich area that you're covering and so relevant for our age and so I'm really happy to say that we're running a course with you at Aleph Trust from, from February, exploring these areas and the intersections between art, ritual and technology. It's from, from February this year. Um, I wonder, Lila, if you could say a little bit more about that course. 
the course is an immersive journey of discovery in visual and sonic landscapes. It starts at the pivotal moment in the history of humanity in which art and shamanic ritual first emerge as a combined enterprise. We shall reflect on widely accepted theories that demonstrate how the birth of art coincided with the development of shamanic technologies and rituals which were catalyzed by altered states of consciousness. We look into Upper Paleolithic cave art, which is over 30,000 years old and has shamanic characteristics and how the aesthetics of these primordial paintings corresponds with Aboriginal rituals and our contemporary experience of cinema and the audiovisual screen cultures in which we are immersed. In the course, I introduce two main theories which bring together art, film, and shamanism. The first is the theory of the ritualistic form in film and art by Maya Deren, which she published in 1946. And I will demonstrate how a short film from 1944 by Maya Deren could function as a ritualistic transformative experience. The second theory, theory is of technoethics and technoethic arts, which is a leading edge interdisciplinary field of research and practice. The term technoethics was coined by the British artist and theorist Roy Ascot. It is comprised from the word tech, meaning technology, and the word noetic, which derives from the ancient Greek word nous, meaning mind. The nous or noetic states are associated with mystical experience and revelation and with altered states associated with shamanic practices. Technoethics as a field that considers the interrelations of technology and consciousness can assist in navigating our multidimensional hyperconnected world comprising psychic inner space, cyberspace where we are now, and virtual reality in conjunction with physical and ecological reality. So in line with technoethics philosophy, new technologies trigger new experiences of consciousness. Mm, yeah, thank you, Lila. Uh, good friends of mine work in that field as artists, filmmakers, and I feel like they're almost you know, the shamans of our age. Um, <laughs> one of the topics you cover in the course uh, is concerned with the overview effect um, as a kind of contemporary example of the interaction between technology and consciousness. Um, so just to say the overview effect is described by some as uh, Kind of altered state of consciousness, expansive state, which was first experienced by astronauts when viewing the Earth from space. Um, so Edgar Mitchell, who was um, on Apollo 14 and six man on the moon, he was the first to report this experience. Um, and it's an experience that seems to uh, give us a sense for the Earth as a whole and, and national boundaries seem to fall away and what divides people recedes into the background and the planetary perspective, the whole becomes much more obvious and imperative. I wonder if you could say a little about that. Currently scientists and psychologists at the University of Missouri are trying to recreate the overview effect without having to leave Earth. They plan to test it um, and to test its impact on people in a laboratory setting, the state of mind induced by seeing Earth from space is intriguing because it has already triggered major shifts in paradigm. We know from research of contemporary culture and contemporary spirituality that the image of Earth from space first seen in the 60s has catalyzed and amplified cultural movements and ideologies. It catalyzed and empowered the environmental, green movement, the goddess and the Gaia movements, ecofeminism and more. Currently, it inspires holistic technologies that aim to 
impacts people people's awareness of earth in a way that they will they would want to protect themselves and future generations from climate change and ecological disasters the overview effect is an integral part of a contemporary cosmology the image of earth from space is a space age mythic archetype in ancient greece the mythos was not regarded as a fantastical fairy tale but a, but as transmission of useful knowledge in the course i discuss with the students in more depth and length the overview effect as it is reflected in recent stories depicted in mainstream films, for example, Gravity, Lucy in the Sky, First Man, and more, there are more. Uh, these popular films are reflections of Western collective consciousness, mingled with various political and ideological agendas, and we learn to view and read them in a critical way. In addition, I bring to the students short uh, artist films and art projects that have gained critical acclaim but are not widely seen or known. These are works by artists whom I met in person, mainly through conferences and in which I also participated as an academic researcher and artist. Therefore, I am informed of their intentions. I will be discussing a fascinating SETI art and science project, project that harnesses the overview effect on the brain to explore future contacts with intelligences in the cosmos. Just to clarify, SETI, S-E-T-I, is a NASA program for, for the search of extra, for the search for extra terrestrial intelligence, which also enables art and science projects. I think this is such a, you know, again, <laughs> it's such a fascinating area that, and uh, the overview effect as an archetype, as the, as an, a cultural archetype of our time, I think is such an important insight. And you also mentioned the, you know, the power of myth. So myth and myth making as means to co-create reality, not as a kind of, you know, fantasy building as, as many people mm, might think, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's such a crucial thing here. And also the, the way art and films can serve as this vehicle for this myth making and ritual engagement in our time. I, I feel that that is so much needed today. And there's also a resurgence of that this sort of shamanic spirit in art and in culture and technology that is beginning to kind of come through and come more into the mainstream. Um, and in the course, you reflect on the meaning of that and the kind of potential of contemporary ritual art forms to facilitate collective transformation and shifts in our culture. I wonder if you could say a little bit more about that. Today, we can identify the resurgence of the shamanic spirit in art, culture and technology. I have written on this resurgence in articles published in academic journals. Although ancient cultures did not possess the technology that enabled them to leave Earth, they built other tools and technologies, such as pyramids and tombs, that were designed to facilitate cosmic travel in the afterlife. In the course, I bring a few films and mixed reality projects made in collaboration with women artists, shamanesses, dancers, choreographers, and filmmakers who work with 21st century technology. These women depict ancient and aboriginal myths and rituals using contemporary means in order to reveal the multidimensional shamanic consciousness. So they're not recreating the past, they are working with the past to discover something new. So they are breaking new grounds in more than one way. These new grounds will be discussed in the course, but all I can say now is that these important, beautiful films and mixed reality projects are built on medicinal wisdom and secret totem stories with potent healing powers with the potential to affect the mind and the body. 
We will unpack the shamanic wisdom embedded in these films and see what is born from the marriage of the old and the new. In this course, we will mainly discuss works that engage with the cultures of ancient Egypt, Aboriginal Australia, and the Amazon rainforest. As mentioned, some of the knowledge that I will be bringing to the course is based on communication with the women who made these works and the processes which involved in the actual making of them are relevant and revealing. And, and the course is such, on the one hand, there's this beautiful knowledge that you're constellating for the students and curating and at the same time there's this deep level of application you know it's it's relevant for so many people working in so many different fields i'm wondering if you could say a little bit about that who do you feel this course is really for whom is it serving today we are called to be critically philosophically and creatively engaged with accelerating technological expansion the historian philosopher yuval harari has stated that this that in this age of accelerated technological expansion people need to look within and explore their inner selves it is the same ancient calling know thyself that was associated with the oracle of delphi and also can be found in the old testament for example in the bible where god is telling abraham to lech lecha meaning go to thyself now this calling is reframed in a new context whereby we need to know the self so that we are able to discern between the human and the machine it is no longer science fiction self-knowledge is a form of protection against being manipulated by the machines of various factors including totalitarian regimes besides the as we all know there are many health and and mental health benefits to self-knowledge self-knowledge can be attained through interaction with inspirational and transformational works of art films and visual culture that shed light on our existence our inner life our aspirations and that sometimes can initiate us with new knowledge that can steer an evolution of consciousness in this course, we learned that the arts developed as a communal, sorry, as a communal tribal experience. And the students will get that sense of a community as part of the learning process. There will be also the option of participating in online noetic rituals. In this day and age, we all need to take time to immerse in art and mind, mindful reflection that will enable us to, to be authentic human beings, capable of critically looking at the world around us and still be capable of feeling compassion towards ourselves, others and our life. My students who come from different walks of life find the topics of this course valuable both personally and professionally the themes discussed would be very useful in the wide context of consciousness studies and research it could add value to those practicing expressive therapies and various coaching methods some of my current students are therapists, professional filmmakers, theater directors and actors, musicians and music teachers, including influential PR people that through the course gain understanding of cultural trends, the ideological and political power of images, as well as becoming critical of our hyperconnected local and global culture. At the same time, other learners with no special background learn because they simply feel that bringing together the arts and spirituality 
into a collective learning framework contribute to the self-development, enrichment, and sense of well-being. Thank you, Leela. It feels so much, and it resonates with many other courses in the Aleph Trust, that what we're trying to do, drawing from this rich tradition of, of you know, the, the arts, spirituality, shamanic, indigenous traditions, we are self-remembering, we are self-empowering, we are increasing self-agency, and I use the word self, but I don't mean just the individual self, but a, a sense of something that comes through us, wants to flow through us and express itself through us, so that we can be in a holistic relationship with the wider world, right? And I feel that is very much resonating through your course materials as well. So thank you so much for taking the time today to speak with me and, and share your aspirations for the course and, and what you've put together for us. And um, to you who are watching this video, if you are intrigued by our conversation, if you'd like to know more about Leela's course, then please go to the Aleph Trust website, have a look. And if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.